Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I'm here with a special guest today, Kimber Pamp. And uh, Kimber, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on. So I just want to introduce you to our audience and kind of find out what all you do in the outdoors world. Um, I'd, I've been kind of following you for a while on social media. And it, it's so cool. Like, you know, people say there's good and bad things about social media. But one of the things that I do love about it is getting to follow all these amazing lady outdoor adventurers and anglers and kayakers and, and all that stuff. So um, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of give listeners a little background about you, where, where you're at and kind of how you got into the whole uh, outdoors life. Yeah. Um, so I'm from Wisconsin. I'm currently residing here in the Milwaukee area, but I've been kind of in this part of the state most of my life. I grew up closer to Madison. I have always been outdoorsy. I came from a very outdoorsy family, and luckily my mom is very outdoorsy as well. So all the ladies and, you know, guys do fish and everything out um, in our family, which is really nice. So up, we go to our cabin up north every summer and we go pan fishing and then um, we go hit streams, lakes from shore, et cetera, during the summer. Um, as I got older, I actually started to get into it more on my own, just as a way to relax, especially when I became a nurse. I just needed to deconnect from people. <laughs> it was just a really nice, relaxing way to de-stress and be out in the wild. So that's kind of how I started doing that. Gotcha. Well, I'm sure now more than ever, that probably is is more important to you um just in the times that we're in now and you know a lot of people are are getting drawn to the outdoors which is kind of a crazy byproduct of of everything that's been going on but um so we kind of have a similar story I grew up in Minnesota originally and so I used to go up to the cabin you know up north um love the summers up there and all the great fishing and um, mm -hmm. and so, so that's cool. It, it's, uh, did, so do you get into ice fishing then too? I honestly, I'm kind of obsessed with it, but it's okay. funny. I actually never went until 2017 growing up in Wisconsin. I was like, this is stupid. You just go sit on a bucket on the ice <laughs> right. and all people do is drink in their shanties. I was like, I don't want to do that. So I actually was really stubborn. I would never try it until no, I'm in my 30s. It's harder for me to lose weight. I gain in the winter. <laughs> so I was like, I need to find some active winter hobbies. And I tried a bunch of different things, skiing, snowshoeing, etc. And I couldn't really find anything that stuck. And then so I finally got talked into going ice fishing. And yeah, I've already put down all my PTO for the year this winter. Like I'm ready to rock. I nice. just got a new shanty. I'm pretty excited. We're going to try um, camping out on the ice this year. Ooh. So I'm really looking forward to that. Taking both the dogs and everything. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, so I was I was the same way when growing up in Minnesota. I just wanted nothing to do with ice fishing. My first experience, my dad took me out and we sat on buckets out in the middle of the lake and we didn't catch anything. And I'm like, this is just pointless, you know. But as I got older and traveled back to Minnesota, I have some opportunities to experience it on a little different level in a nice heated shanty and it's like, okay, I can, I get this. <laughs> I really like all the toys too. Like give me the underwater cameras, the pan optics, the auger, yeah. like all that stuff. I love and It's fun. And I don't know. I like, I'm kind of old school. I haven't broken down and gotten a snowmobile or anything yet. Cause I kind of like having to drag my sled through the snow and get a good sweat on. And I like running and gunning while I'm out on the lake too. Like I sometimes will set up shanties, but a lot of times I won't because I like to pop around and see what mm -hmm. I can find. So I've really gotten into it. It's fun. Well, cool. Well, good. Yeah, it's good to have that outlet in the winter time as well. So you're not just 
sitting indoors and it's cold and dark and <laughs> <laughs> exactly like i in the past years i would bake a lot and knit and read my book by the fire and had a whole lot of activities and like with the baking it was just bad news first yeah so let's talk about uh let's switch gears and let's talk about kayak fishing because yeah. that seems to be from what i've seen on your social media that seems to be kind of your jam I love the kayak fishing. That was something that happened later in life too. Again, like always love the water, always love fishing. Didn't go kayaking until I graduated from nursing school. Um, me and my best friend, I booked us a trip to the Apostle Islands. It was mm. a guided kayaking and camping trip. Um, that was the first time either of us had ever gone kayaking. Luckily, I have a very uh, adventurous bestie. And we just were like, let's do this thing. So they taught us how to flip the kayaks. And then we paddled out to the um, Apostle Islands, camp for the night. Got to go bomb around in the sea caves and everything. And after that, I felt, completely fell in love with kayaking. I ended up buying a um, like a really cheap kayak from Walmart. Now that I know uh, that those things sink so easy, I would never suggest doing that again. <laughs> but um, get a better one. They have flotation stuff in them if you tip them, if you buy a higher quality one. But um, Anyways, got a really cheap kayak and I mean, just kind of seemed like the natural next step was to take a fishing pole with me and start fishing out of it. Cause now I had all this access to all this, these areas that I've never really yeah. been able to fish. And the kayaks are nice too, because like, if you have an SUV, you can literally just shove it right in the back of your vehicle and go. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'll strap it on top and I have a trailer for one of them now, but it's just, it's nice and it's convenient. Um, especially for like working adults, just to be able to put that in your car pop over on the lake really early in the morning and then just fish for a couple hours and throw everything in your car and go to work. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of how it all started with the kayaks. And after that, it's just kind of taken over. Um, it was a little bit rough at first. I'm not going to lie. I struggled a little bit with the wind. There might've been mm -hmm. a lot of cussing and colorful <laughs> words. So it's probably best not a whole lot of people are out on the water when I was trying it out at first. But once I got it down, I really liked it. And I feel like you can sneak up on the fish a lot better um, in the kayaks than you can in the boat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and access a lot of areas that boats can't get to. So kind of have a exactly. bit of an edge. So do you and know she Shelly Holland? I don't. Okay, she does um, charters up at the Apostle Islands. Oh, and, okay. And, um, and part of what she does, I think she brings some kayaks with her. And then she lets her guests get out and, you know, paddle nice. around that beautiful scenery up there. So, oh, well, yeah. and it is like once you start doing it, you get kind of addicted. You start with small fish out of the kayak and then you keep building up. And now I'm <laughs> on this thing where I just want to see how big of a fish I can get in my kayak. What's the biggest you've caught so far? Uh, 28 pound king. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yes. What was that like? <laughs> Um, if there, so with it being a pedal drive kayak, you can kind of chase them down and pedal backwards as they're running and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it honestly worked really well. I'll set my kayak up. I've got a 13 foot, um, kayak and it's pedal drive. I have, uh, the stealth rod holders and I will troll and literally those things are great because your pole used to be sitting there and all of a sudden you'll boom, and your pole yeah. will go back and you grab it. Yeah. It's usually like a. 15, 20 minute, 30 minute fight. You kind of got to slowly work them in. You cannot muscle those fish in because they're way too strong and they tear out hundreds and hundreds of feet on each run, especially earlier in the season. And by the time you get it in, you are shaking because you're so excited that thing isn't in net and you can't believe you actually got it. Very cool. What's, uh, do you have like your next species in mind that you want to go after? Mm. Or just so a bigger feel, king? Mm. <laughs> That one's kind of tough. So this last year, I'm a member of the Wisconsin Women Fish Group, and I really went hard after their, they have like a competition where whoever gets the most master angler fish uh, wins mm -hmm. like the angler of the year. I went really hard after that this last year. So I got a lot of different species. I ended up tying the competition with one of my really good friends. So it worked out perfect. Oh, wow. But after that, I kind of decided, you know, I think I'm going to chill out after the going for big fish for a little bit. We're not going to measure anything for a while. And we're just going to go back to enjoying fishing. Yeah. 
There you go. Gets a little intense when you're you've got that goal and you're trying to you know make those like, achievements. So I get well, that. and my friend that I tied with is a very strong female angler, so I knew I had her to compete against. So <laughs> I really put in my all with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you mentioned stealth rod holders and I just want to give them a shout out because that's one way we're kind of connected. Um, really great company and a great product to stealth rod holders. They make a variety of different rod holders for whatever kind of boat you have. So kayak anglers, and I know they've become very popular with, with kayak anglers. Um, I, I had a pontoon and that was originally what caught my eye was stealth because they had a really cool design. Um, I always had trouble finding a rod holder that fit my rails on my pontoon just right. And theirs is uh, just the smartest design I've seen where the same mount can mount on a round rail or a square rail, just depending on how you turn it. And then their QR1 and QR2 rod holders just fit into whatever different kind of mount you have for your particular boat. And the QR1s are for your smaller rods. And then the QR2s are, are your larger rods if you're going after bigger fish. Um, like, I really uh, like the QR2s. I actually use those for everything. Even when I'm trolling little panfish, like you can still get them to fit in there just fine. So I leave those on my boat all the time the fly rods fit in them like they honestly are very handy and work really well i've been very impressed yeah and the coolest part to me about it is that they have this quick release system so unlike other rod holders where you have a strap going across or some other way to secure the rod um theirs is just this rubber piece like if you think of um you know in your garage if you hang a, a broom handle or something they have those little things where you can push it in and the like rubber holds it. And that's kind of the same idea that, that he used to design the, the rod holder. So you don't have to have a strap going across it, the, it holds it in place by itself. So when you do get a fish, all you got to do is just set the hook and you don't have to mess with undoing something first or you could potentially lose the fish. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, your rod's going to be secure. So, um, love stealth rod holders uh, they do still have a strap if you want that extra security like sometimes if i'm running down the lake and I, I have my rod still in the rod holder and like maybe i've just turned it up you know so it's just straight up and down i may put the strap on there just for a little extra security but um great great products so agreed agreed yeah. For more than a hundred years, pheasant hunting has been a storied South Dakota tradition. And for the next century, South Dakota is focused on making pheasant hunting even greater. Welcoming more hunters to the field, showing the hunting community is for everyone. That's a legacy to stand the test of time. Go to HuntTheGreatestSD.com to hear stories from women who hunt and learn what makes South Dakota the world's pheasant capital. That's HuntTheGreatestSD.com. South Dakota, sportswomen, welcome. Well, cool. Um, so also I wanted to touch on, I see a lot of dog photos on your uh, social <laughs> media. So talk a little bit about your dogs. They're my babies. I have a 10-year-old Springer Spaniel. That dog has been my partner in crime for forever. Um, I started going on trips a lot by myself in my 30s. Just I would take PTO like the day before my time off came up. I would see what the weather was like in different areas. And I would kind of willy nilly just decide this is where I'm road tripping. And that dog was my partner in crime camping all over the place. Um, recently, since she's getting a little older, I decided it was time to get her a friend. Um, Sam is a Belgian Tavirin, so he kind of looks like a long haired German shepherd. Okay. Um, and he's two. So I just got him this summer and he came, um, he's already been trialed in Schutzend. So it's kind of like a bite sport slash obedience and tracking. And I've been taking him to club once in a while on the weekends for that too. He's an absolute riot. Sweetest dog ever. Kind of. <laughs> he's like the dumb blonde of the dog world. I love him. He's very cute. So they keep me out of trouble. <laughs> and do and do they get along pretty well? 
They do, actually. I've been shocked because my Springer, like, let's be honest, she's been the only child for a while. So she's a little bit of a princess. She actually has taken to him really well. I was shocked. Like, they play together and everything. That blew my mind. I thought for sure she was going to be like, why are you doing this to me, mom? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, do they both like fishing or do you ever take any out on the kayak with you? So my Springer, I have a really hard time keeping her out of the water. So <laughs> I, if I do take her, it's got to be like on a really quiet lake and she'll literally swim around in her little doggy life jacket um, and she doesn't like to stay in the kayak. I do like to take them ice fishing. Um, Sam, I'm mm -hmm. going to try it this winter, but Abby, I took ice fishing a ton last year. I actually hooked up a second sled behind mine and I put like her dog kennel so she could sit in that with her little bed and then I stick a little sweater on her and she hates every minute of it, but <laughs> she used her sweater, but so I do that. So she's got somewhere warm. She can go chill out, but um, she loves ice fishing. She will try to steal anyone's fish. Um, she's very perplexed when they get put back too. She'll usually sit there and dig at the hole. Like where did it go? But she has the time of her life out ice fishing. So they're pretty cute. I like it. Super cool. You think you'll take them um, camping out on the ice when you do that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. I just got the biggest otter shanty. So I've already, Sam tethers pretty well to like beds or he'll just stay on them and then Abby will bring a crate. So yep, dogs are coming too. It's going to be a whole party. Great. Well, super fun. So besides looking forward to ice fishing, do you have anything, anything else coming up? That you want to mention oh, let's see I'm trying to think I I feel like I actually accomplished a lot this year so I'm feeling pretty good I uh, one of my goals I've had for a while is to be better at fly fishing so I really put in some hours with that this year and I feel like that's going a lot better like I was able to get some nice pike and some nice smallmouth bass um nice. I don't just catch the trees anymore like I can actually cast a little bit so that's gotten pretty good um I went up north and um, went inland trout fishing with a guide this year, which actually was probably my favorite outing this whole year. Um, yeah. It was fairly early in the season, and we ended up running into a bear with some cubs, which Ooh. was exciting and slightly terrifying all at the same time because the cubs actually didn't hear us. So they got fairly close to us before they realized we were there. And then the mom like scoot, like scurries them up a tree and then she goes to the other side of the river and is like pacing. And we both had never run into that before. And we both spent a fair amount of time in the North woods. So we had to skid it out a lot of there pretty quick, yeah. but it was still really neat. And yeah, I ended up cool. getting an 18 inch brookie. So like that made my day. That's probably going to be one of my favorite fish of my life that I catch. So and it was just, it was so peaceful. I mean, it's all yeah. um, like national forest. You don't see another soul. There's barely even any like proof that there were ever people there. So I thought that was really neat. Definitely have to like trek through some interesting stuff. You don't want to take a wrong step or you're going to end up to mud like up to here. But it was, it was an adventure. I really liked it. Can't yeah, wait to do it again. Like it. Very cool. So to improve your fly fishing skills, what, what was your process? Because I've heard a lot of people that you know they do conventional fishing and then they want to try to get better at fly fishing and some people I've talked to have suggested that in order to do that you really almost need to put your other gear down and just focus on fly casting what was your process like to get better at that so I would agree with that I actually for the most part have just kept my fly rod stuck in my car whereas in years past I've had all my other gear just because I am way more efficient with my um, conventional gear. I've been trying to get better at fly fishing. Like I probably picked it up like four or five years ago, but it's been one of those things that I would like break it out like a novelty, like once or twice a year, never really get very good at it. Just catch fish on it a couple times and then put it away. So this year I just was like, Hey, this is going to happen. Um, what really helped me, I actually went out with some guides this year mm. and that made all the difference in the world because just being able to get my cast down relatively quick and have somebody else just be like, hey, this do this. Like I learned the double haul when I was out with um one of my more favorite guides. He's just in Milwaukee here. He works at the fly fisher. His name is Joe. He is fantastic. He's honestly great to go out and work with because he's very laid back and like very great with women. Um, as, not that I've ever met any guides that aren't, but I always have this fear like that you're going to have a very arrogant guy that you go out with, but, uh, he's great to work with and just like, we'll give you a couple pointers on things. 
and then you get your cast down like that and then it's a blast and then you actually want to use your gear catching a couple bigger fish on the fly gear too really got me more ramped into it and now it's just kind of a challenge like yes I know I could do better with my conventional but I'm to the point where I'm getting better with my fly gear and I just like I want to do well with it and I want to catch big fish on the fly so now I'm just being stubborn <laughs> so do you do a lot of fly fishing from the kayak I haven't a ton. Um, I usually will pan fish um, with the fly rod in the spring. I've been more, I really like to wade. <laughs> like, I don't know why. I'm a child. I like being in the water, even <laughs> when it's cold like today. So I just really like getting in the water and fly fishing in the water. So you must have some good waders for that when it's cold. I do. Yeah. And I definitely wore like six layers under them today <laughs> and my heated Milwaukee jacket because it was cold. It was like 25 <laughs> degrees out this morning. Whew. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's chilly to get in the water. <laughs> it is. Toe warmers, they're the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I would say... Um, based on what you said, you know, t for people wanting to learn, I highly agree with you on hiring a guide mm -hmm. because it cuts the learning curve and, you know, it's so much faster. And, yeah, you got to invest some money, but, you know, you're also supporting a local guide, too. So mm -hmm. they work hard to to do what they do. So um, definitely look into that route. I really only had one guide that I feel like kind of was you know <laughs> kind of like a know-it-all kind of harder to learn from a little bit intimidating but other than that one experience everybody I've been out with has been like like you said just totally patient and a good teacher and um, fun can, too yeah like. <laughs> yeah exactly good personality so mm -hmm. So, well, very cool. Well, congratulations on a successful year. It sounds like Thank you. you got to do a lot and had a lot of fun and learned a lot and experienced a lot. So I hope uh, you can build on that going in 22. And I'll be looking forward to following more of your adventures on social media. Where can people follow you? Um, so I've got a couple of different pages. If you want to see everything I post, Instagram is probably where I post the most. And it's um, at Outdoor Nurse Kimber. Otherwise, I'm on Facebook under Kimber Pamp. And then kind of my page where I post um, most of my fishing stuff is the ice fishing diaries. And you are going to get an in-depth look at my ice fishing adventures this winter on that page. So if you want to see it all, go check that out. Awesome. We look forward to it. I hope you guys have good weather up there for good ice fishing conditions this year. And uh, thanks so much for taking some time to come on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me.